Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs project. Okay, this is a take on one of my, not older templates, but one of my older templates. I have a tissue holder, a tissue holder for those travel tissues. This is not boxed and this one's boxed. And I show you how to not only make these, but I also show you how to fussy cut for the back to get placement just where you want it. And that's done with my five and a half by six and a half and my five and a half by seven and a half. This guy here makes this, this guy that's a little bit wider, the five and a half by seven and a half, that's what gives me that lining with the faux binding. And then the fussy cut frame was an addition that I added to it. This fussy cut is what allows me to get what it is that I want placed exactly where it is that I want it to be placed. So I have two videos that you can look for and I'll have links for them below if you haven't seen this before. But I had a customer that called and said, hey, can you make one that has a pocket? And I said, sure, absolutely, no problem. Well, then I started checking into it and it's like, well, do I want to hold hand sanitizer like this size? Or do I want to hold hand sanitizer like this? Or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this? Or maybe I want to have some lotion or they make hand sanitizer that comes like a lotion. Do I want to have lipstick? I'd like to have a little thing of mouthwash and some lip gloss. So all of these things, including these wipes, will change the way that the pocket works. Not only the way the pocket works, but if things are going to, let's put this in here, let's put this in here, let's put this in here. It's pretty full and that holds a lot, but do you see how it falls right out? So how do we make the pocket so that it will work best for what it is that we want to do? So I came out with a template that's adjustable. So if you want a bigger pocket, this one is a whole lot bigger than this one is. Let's put something in here so you can see the difference. Can you see how this one isn't nearly as deep? as this one is. So I have a template for the pocket that is adjustable. This is a five by eight inch template. I've got hash marks down the middle all the way across, both vertically and horizontally, so you can see that. Then I have inch markings. On this side, because this is five inches, there's a one, two, two and a half, and then we have the three uh, here. So two and a half here, three, four, five. So this template here is adjustable. You can go in and cut Color with one of the metallic Sharpies if you want to. So if you wanted to make it instead of five by eight, five by seven, or seven and a half, you could take this with a measuring tool, measure from here to here, a half inch mark, and then draw a line to it. If you were gonna do that, the five and a half or the five by um, eight would be a, a five by seven and a half, or let's make it seven. And do you see how I'm basically lining that up here to here with the edge? Now this is a layer cake, so it's got the pink to edges, but that still works just fine. When I cut around all of this, that would give me a five by seven. This, no matter where I am on here is going to give me whatever measurement as long as it's smaller than five by eight. So this template is used for the pocket. So what we're going to do is make one and I want to show you we don't need the fussy cut for this because we're not fussy cutting anything on the back side. You can if you want to if you're going to fussy cut something place it right inside of here. If we look to see this is almost I mean there's barely a turnover. I've turned it over a little bit and then turned it over one more time. So we're barely losing any of the heights here. This bottom, you can see I've done a little pleat and a little pleat here. I'll talk about pleats and gathers and those kinds of things because there are lots of options for you. So we're going to go ahead and make one. I'm going to move all of these guys out of the way. We'll keep our fingers crossed that monkey doesn't interfere too much with our filming. And I want to show you how it works. So again, we don't need the fussy cut frame, but we are going to use the other three pieces. So what we want to think about when we make one of these is whatever fabrics I'm going to be using, I don't want to waste what I have. This right here, you can see how I've added just the, this guy here. I always have scrap fabric that I like to use. That's the one right here that I have, and you can see it's a little bit different there. That's my lining inside of here. That is done. That faux binding, this is the same as it is over here. These guys are the same. That's done with the larger piece. I'm gonna use for the sample today my white. So this white is gonna be my faux binding that's here. This fabric right here that you're not seeing a whole lot of, this fabric, 
this fabric that you're barely seeing any of, this fabric, because I have the pocket lower on here. See how the pocket is a whole lot higher here? It's a whole lot higher here. This is lower here. Do I have something that I don't have to worry about falling out? We're going to be able to adjust because that's done with this template. So not only will we adjust for how deep it is, but we can also adjust for how tall it is. If I've got a bigger item, a taller item, this is going to be completely flopping out. It's tight to get in there, but you can see, well, it's going to stay in pretty well there, but at some point this is not going to work. See how that's stretching my fabric? So when you've got something bigger, you want to think about how high up the pocket is and how wide that pocket is too. So we'll make our adjustments based on what it is we're going to be doing. All right, so the white fabric is going to be the binding, that faux binding fabric that I have here. This polka dot here, that's going to be done with the five and a half by six and a half inch template. And for this one, I'm going to be using my flowers fabric. It's not going to show a whole lot, but I do want it to be able to have a little bit of a pop. And then I'm going to use bandana. The reason that I've used a bandana fabric is this may get pretty dirty being in my hands, being in my car, in my purse, whatever it is, and a bandana fabric, you know, that's pretty good. All right. So why do I have this here? I just want as a reminder why the no Lip material is so good. This for me to cut, I have to position this in whatever position I've got to put weight on here. When I'm working with the no slip material, again, you can see how that grabs. All right, so we're going to be cutting three pieces. If you haven't used the rotary cutter before, I've got lots of videos on uh, YouTube, so you can go check out all of those videos. I'm going to cut, turn my template, cut, turn my template. And yes, I am a lefty, so for your right handers, sorry about that, but you get the idea. So that guy there gave me my five and a half by six and a half. We're going to put that one aside. I mentioned that we're going to use for the pocket the five by eight. Now, do I want to do a five by seven and a half? Do I want to do a four by eight? Whatever it is you want to do, you're going to first square off your edge. And when you square off that edge, that's going to be your straight edge that you're going to be using. So if I don't want to do eight, if I want to do seven, do you see how right there? That allows me to line up and line up. But I also want to do the same thing for the height. So we're going to square off over here. When we square off here, I'm going to be looking at my edge and my edge. And probably the black fabric isn't the best one for me to use as my example. But what this allows me to do, let's cut that off. What this allows me to do is use a straight edge and a straight edge. So if I wanted to move this, I'm going to line this up on my mat. And if I wanted to make this a little bit smaller, again, you can do your markings on your template. And do you see how here I've got a little bit further over? I've got a little bit further down. So when I go to cut, that allows me to get exactly what it is that I want. So you place this wherever it is that you want. I'm going to go ahead and cut a 5 by 8 just so you can see the size that it actually gives me. So we're going to cut. We're going to cut. The other thing you can do too is you can start with the pocket five by eight. And as you go to work on this and you decide when you're sewing this together, I want to make my pocket a little bit smaller, then you use this template and you cut. You use this template and you cut. So you can square up, make it smaller, make it tall, uh, make it less tall, make it less wide as you go. All right, we're going to cut our faux binding. And this is that traditional method that we would normally be doing when we're making the tissue holder. But we've got our three pieces now that give me my faux binding, my, uh, my outside fabric here that's barely going to show depending on the size of the pocket and then the pocket itself. All right, so just like we did before, we're going to be sewing edges together. These two edges, then we're going to be joining these two edges, but I want to put the pocket in between. And you can look to see how high that pocket is. So when we sew this down, we're going to fold this down. We're going to fold that down. We're going to do a top stitch. The other thing you can do too is if you don't like a raw edge inside of here, you could put double the width of the fabric. Just put this on the fold, and now you'd have a fold here inside. Instead. If you did the fold, by the way, it's kind of a cool thing to do. You can, let's imagine that I've got this folded and I have plenty of fabric. There's a fold there. I can go ahead and give myself a little bit of a casing. 
that casing, I could then later on feed through an elastic. And the pocket, instead of being floppy like this, you could tighten that elastic up to hold in so it would stretch and hold that. That's one of the nice options about all of this. So play with the templates, decide what it is you want to do. All right, we're going to top stitch this down. We're going to fold it down, fold it down. You can take your time and press at the ironing board if you want to. You can also use a pressing tool. I've got Phillips stiletto that I love, so I'm going to use it. I'm just going to give a little bit of a press. We're folding down one time, and then we're going to fold that over again. And then we're going to top stitch that. So I've got one fold. I've got another fold. If you have a foot that allows you to do some kind of a satin edge finish, you know, it gives you that. It's a nice, you know, kind of a napkin finish. Put that foot on and use that too. So you decide what it is you want to do. You can sew once and then sew again, or you can do what I'm going to be doing here and just folding it. All right, so we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch this down. And I'm working on the back side. I highly recommend you work on the front if you want to have not that bobbin stitch showing. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but Monkey is having a great old time with my threads. Okay, so we have folded this down. That becomes the top of my pocket right here. All right, now we're going to think about the process. This is, the flower is the polka dot here. So we want this pocket basically to be like this. And you can see how much bigger that is. Do we want this pocket to be huge like this, or do we want to cut off a little bit? I'm going to go ahead, since I've got this down below, I'm going to say, hmm, I think I'm going to cut off a half of an inch. And you can see right here, so you can do this prior to, or you can do this as you're working. It's totally up to you. That's the cool thing about the template. See how that grabs? So when I go to cut, I'm just cutting off a half of an inch as I go. All right, now, what are we going to do? We're going to sew these together. We're going to then later on stitch this together, but let's do all three of our layers at the same time. So this is the polka dot. This is the pink, and the white is going to be this pink inside of here. So just like we do with our tissue holder that doesn't have a pocket, we're going to stitch this side together first. And then we're going to come back and join all of these sides, even though they don't match up. So if you want to use pins, you can. This is a getter done project. This is a great assembly line project. This is a great craft show project. I have people tell me all the time that they make these and they sell these at the craft shows. And you know, you throw in the little tissue there and it's ready to go, especially with allergy season. Whatever seam allowance you use, be consistent. I like a quarter inch seam allowance about. All right, so you can see this is going to be what we're seeing here. And notice too, this is how much fabric about will be showing there. So that's not a bad look. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna line this up. We're going to come over here. We're going to line this up. If you need to pin or clip, go right ahead. You can use glue. A glue stick works really well. You can use the peel off tape. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. As we stitch, this one may be one that you want to pin or clip. I'm just going to hold these in place. Same seam allowance that we used just a minute ago. And I'm looking to make sure my layers are all lined up. All right, so let's see what it is that we have. Now, when you turn this right sides out, I'm going to turn it wrong because I want you to see so you're not saying, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? Do you see how this is wrong? This is wrong. What we want to do is just flip this over. So don't panic. You're good. You're good to go. All right, what we want to do is look at our binding. This is our faux binding that we have. 
over here. So we're going to basically be looking to see this same amount from this. This is the one that's going to be my guide. I don't care about the bandana yet. That fabric we're going to be adjusting in a minute. I want to have this flat. If you wanted to go to the iron and press underneath there so that this seam was all the way, you could turn it on the back side, set your, your uh, stitches if you wanted to. That would really help. But we're looking at this piece right here and I want to have the amount that I have over here be the same as I have over here. So I just want to have that nice and flat. And you can see here I've got more than I need over here, a little bit less, and we're just going to go in and kind of give a finger press. All right, I've done one side. Let's check to see if that works out pretty evenly with the other. And again, I'm looking at my daisies underneath. And Monkey is checking everything out, so we're going to give this a finger press, too. I don't care about the bandana at all. Right now, I just care about the daisies. That's what matters, the daisy and that white faux binding. All right, so you can see this is pretty consistent with that being pretty consistent. You can top stitch here, you can top stitch here, you can top stitch here, you can top stitch here. What I want to talk about is for the pocket. You can add one pleat. You can add two pleats further away. You can add two more pleats. pleats. You can add elastic down at the bottom even. It's totally up to you. What I want to do though is we're going to later on need that center mark. So let's go ahead and find the center mark. We're going to place these two together. And I'm looking at that faux binding. And by the way, you can use your mat for that too, and you can use the template as well. So I'm going to give this just a little bit more of a finger press and this a little bit more of a finger press. And I'm holding nice and tight as I fold this in half. We're going to take a snip. That snip is going to help me out now and it'll help me out later too. So there's my snip there. And you can see that little bit of a snip. And we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. And I'm not going to cut through this one yet. We're going to do that in a minute. And we're just looking to see that we've got about the same amount of white. We're going to hold that tight. And we just want to cut through the white and Maybe you're going to cut through the daisies, but maybe not. As long as I have one of them cut, we're good to go. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to look to see, are we going to do one pleat? If we're going to do one pleat, we can take this and go to the center. And notice how I'm opening that up all the way. We are going to snip here at the bottom, not at the top, because we've got a nice finished seam there. All right, if we did a pleat at the bottom, we basically are going to be folding this over. And remember, we cut off, we were at eight inches, we cut off half of an inch. So this is seven and a half. And what was our template? Seven and a half. So a half of an inch wider is what I made this pocket, not a whole lot. This pocket is a good um, inch bigger there. All right, so we've got this. We can do one pleat like that if we want to. We can fold here. From here to here, we could take a snip in between there, too, if we wanted to do that. And we could do a little fold here. We could do a little fold here. It's up to you what kind of a fold you want. What are you putting inside of here? And how much of a double fold you want or one fold? I'm going to do right there in the center. So we're going to go at that center. And all we want to do is, again, look to see my whites so that my seam binding, that faux binding, is going to be exactly the same or close enough. And I'm going to eyeball this. You can do this at the ironing board if you want to and give that a good press. And do you see basically what I've got there? I'm going to find my pins. Monkey was going after my pins earlier, so I moved those out of the way. I'm going to place a pin right in here. And I mentioned that you could top stitch down here 
top stitch over now with that pleat in place, top stitch, top stitch here. If you're doing the top stitching, it's certainly going to make everything easier. And by the way, pressing makes everything easier and look better too. I'm going to finger press just for practicality, but I would, if you're going to be making these assembly line, go ahead and cut, 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 so, 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 press, 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 all of that. All right, we're going to top stitch, top stitch, top stitch, top stitch, all my layers together. If you've got a foot that allows you to stitch right in the ditch, now would be a great time to put that on your machine. I'm going to look to see that all three of my layers are lined up together. If I can find my daisies. And my daisies are a little bit higher up. I'm going to reposition this pin. and pull my daisy fabric down a little bit. And again, at the ironing board, that would be something that you would catch. The bottom is going to be caught in my seam, and remember this is a raw edge inside, so if you want to use your, your serger, this is a great serger project, except for the top stitching that we're doing right here, um, and the top stitching on the pocket too. Now, just like we've made all the other pocket or the other tissues, we're going to put our faux bindings together at the center. But I want to show you one of the things that I think works really well, especially if you've created a bigger pocket. This pocket is not that much bigger, but look, that does hold quite a bit, even without the tissues here. The tissues are going to take up a little bit of space. So are the goodies that you have inside of the pocket. But this right here, again, if you wanted to have this a little bit bigger, it's going to hold quite a bit. All right, so I mentioned that one of the things that you can do when you're working on this, if, if you're adding a pocket, is instead of putting these where they're lined up, to each other at the center. Remember that little snip that we had there? Do you see how if I bring this here, that goes to the snip, that goes to the snip. If I did those, that opens up evenly. Uh, let's see, this is the one that opens up evenly. Do you see how that opens up a little bit more? Let me show you this one and how the tissue stays a little bit further in. You can overlap. I did this on my doggy poop bag. So if you wanted to do that, that's a great way for it to just hold a little bit tighter. So there is my cut mark there for the center. So I'm going to work on the back side and I'm going to make this side go over a little bit. And this one is going to go right up to the center. And let's flip this over and see what I've got. See that little bit of an overlap that's there? That little bit of an overlap just holds the tissue in a little bit tighter, a little bit better, so that I don't have to worry about it being so loose that the tissue is going to pop out, especially if you've got a lot in the back area in that pocket, so you're worried about things falling out. And again, this is a good time for you to use your mat to be able to look to see. I'm looking at this lined up here, and I want this width here about the same. So we've got this pocket here, this fold over a little bit, and you can see there and there, we're pretty good. All right, so this is where we're gonna use either a serger or a straight stitch, and then a zigzag or pinking shears or whatever it is. We'll stitch this down, we'll stitch this down first. And again, you think about this is your raw edge that's gonna be inside the tissue holder. All right, so we're gonna stitch this down and we're almost done. I'm going to back stitch now. Did you notice I didn't back stitch before? I didn't need to because that was in the seam that I'm doing right now. But back stitching here will make a big difference.
stop for a minute because I want to show you one other thing that you can do. I'm going to pop this out, and I honestly don't know. Yep, wrong side. Okay, so I wanted to show you about adding one of these, the straps. A little strap here like I've got here. You don't have to have a strap here. But when you're adding a strap, do you see the pocket there? Imagine that it's going in the opposite direction. You would basically place this, looking at that cut that's there, that cut, and we would stitch these two together. And I've done this on lots of other projects. The doggy uh, poop bag, you can see it there. This, stitch that down, and then when you have this here, and when you have this here, that gives you something like this. Okay, so this one is not gonna have it, but you get the idea. Doesn't need it, but it's a nice option to have. All right, I've just eyeballed my closure here. You would take the time to go ahead and line that up and check on your mat to make sure everything was lined up consistently. All right, let's flip this right sides out. Pinking shear, zigzag, serger, whatever it is that you want to do on that outside edge, that seam allowance that we have there is gonna make this look a lot prettier. But let's flip this right sides out. We've got the bandana that's not gonna be as pretty as our flowers, but I like the pop of the flowers there. We're poking out those corners. We're gonna put in our tissue. And you all know tissues come in different sizes, different configurations. You can take the tissues out of the plastic if you want to, or leave them in the plastic container. If they're in plastic packaging that has the cut in a different position, and I'm gonna get my stiletto instead of my scissors. I definitely don't wanna poke a hole in here. All right, so I mentioned tissues have different configurations. So that means that they might come out of the top, they might come out of the side, and what are we doing here? We're making it for the middle. So let's put tissues in here. You can see this one I pulled out of the plastic, and let's just pop this right inside. And you can choose to take out some of the tissues if you feel like it's too tight, if you feel like they're not gonna come out consistently, it's up to you. There are tissues that are a lot thinner. Go compare, you know, go to the stores that you shop at and go compare the different tissue brands and see which one it is that you like. I'm just gonna kind of finagle this and that's really full. But as soon as I pull out the first tissue, it's gonna be less and less. Just like the doggy bags that we had for the doggy poop bag holder, when you start using doggy bags, this is gonna be thinner and thinner and thinner. So you can see how even though I overlapped this a little bit, I've got a lot of tissues in this one. See, even this, this one, it's hard to tell, but this one is a lot. This one's a lot fatter. I've got lots more tissue. So make your tissue holder based on the kind of tissues that you're using. All right, let's look at the pocket. So here's our pocket. We've got the pleat down at the bottom versus a pleat and a pleat versus a pleat and a pleat. And you can see how this is a lot more of a pleat than this one. This was wider than this one here. This one was a lot narrower, but let's see what we can put inside of here. I can put in my little lotion if I want to, that works really well. I can grab one of my hand sanitizers. I can put in the wipes. There are times where I like to use the wipes that are different than the hand sanitizer. So I've got that that works really well. You can see how tight that is, but that's gonna hold pretty well. I mean, do you see how that's not falling out there? So I think that works really well. I like to have my lip gloss that's in there. So the lip gloss, that would be perfect too. Notice what it's doing because I've got so much in here now with the pocket size, this is opening up a little bit. If I hadn't cut off that half of an inch on the pocket, this probably would hold this and stay closed a whole lot better. So play around, figure out what size it is that works best for you. And then decide if you wanna box the corners. What I ended up doing on this one was I boxed the corner at the top. Can you see here and here? I didn't box the corner on the bottom. I didn't feel like the boxed corner at the bottom would work so well because I want this to be able to hold as much as possible, but I wanted to give the tissue area, see how it gives a little bit more shape? And I think that works really well. This one is not boxed. 
and you can see how it gives more of a point here. This one that I just did, it's really full. And do you see how, remember that we didn't have it quite as wide? So, and I folded this down a little bit more here than I did on these two. So you decide how it is you want this to be. Okay, guys, if you have a request for a template or a project that you want me to make, let me know and I'll be happy to come up with something for you. I'm always gonna make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be just because I like you to have options. So this template along with the tissue holder template, whether you bought the tissue holder two piece template set or with the fussy cut, these guys here with this, when we're adding the pocket, we don't need the frame. So these three here allow me to make tissue holders with the pocket. I think this is a really fun project, not only to keep in your purse, but to keep in your car, to have that little hanger, put it on the back of your backpack. If this is hanging off your backpack, you've got it right there. You've got it ready to go. You can even put it on a belt loop, you know, whatever it is. Allergy seasons, maybe uh, is, is here. You can put your medication back here too. So there are a lot of options for you. So tissue holder pocket, it. This guy is a little quick, fun project to do. Thanks guys for watching.